So it's time for another Rico GR3 video. In this one, I'm gonna share some photos that I took in Busan with this camera. And if you stick around long enough, I'm gonna show you something that I don't show many people. Some photos taken when it wasn't raining on a sunny day. If you know me, you know that I love the rain. Something about rainy days just puts me in the mood to take photos. And I also know that the results are gonna be better. So whenever it's raining, that is the time that I'm gonna choose to go out as opposed to when it's not raining because when it's not raining I have to work five times as hard for the same results at least generally so it's simply a smart use of my time. So my second full day in Busan it was about 2 a.m. in my hotel room I look outside and it's raining I'm in a new city and I can't resist the temptation to head out the door. Now South Korea is a very safe place and that's one of the reasons that I really love the country so I don't have to worry too much about going out by myself in a new city at 2 a.m. Realistically nothing bad is going to happen. As a matter of fact and this happens like almost every time when I saw it was raining I thought I would just go out for a quick walk around the hotel for like 15 minutes and then on my way back get some snacks at the 7-eleven. So I just took the Rico with me but then I ended up being out for like two hours from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. Because when the conditions are like this and I'm finding new places, I just really can't resist shooting it. I have to keep taking photos until the batteries run out. The first photo of this meat restaurant. I like the lights uh, at night when everything else is closed down, but the meat is highlighted. Second photo of this bus stop for the guy with an umbrella and the art exhibition thing. Now in hindsight, when you're out at 2 a.m. or after, 28 millimeter lens may not be the best choice because of how close you have to get to people in order to compose them because you know it's 2 a.m can feel a little bit uncomfortable going super close to people <laughs> uh, at such late hours of the night but again korea is pretty safe and uh, i wasn't being ridiculous but definitely something to consider a lot easier to go close to people during the daytime as opposed to uh, 2 a.m. especially if you are in a new city and exploring some alleys that may not be um, that may be a little bit sketchy which I'll show you later. I found this it is not a neon sign even though you might call it a neon sign it's actually an LED sign and there's a difference but it regardless provided really cool lighting effects because of the changing colors. I took many photos of this and I also took some video that I used to make a reel on Instagram uh, with my phone for some reason I just didn't think of taking b-roll again because in my mind I'm like just going out for 15-20 minutes and not definitely not gonna make a YouTube video about it but here I am. So unfortunately not enough b-roll on this one, no vlogging footage. Now the Ricoh GR3 I wouldn't call it a night photography camera but one nice thing about this camera is that it does have decent IBIS. So despite the sensor performance not being the best at high ISOs, it can actually go quite low in the shutter speed without having to worry too much. And you can see the slow shutter speed by how much drag there is in the rain. There are very long raindrops. And here is a, some sort of a philosophical message. It's only with the heart that one can see rightly what is essential is invisible to the eye. Saint Exupery trying to take some really close-up photos of the uh, puddle. That is one thing that is fun about this camera is because it has a macro feature. You can focus really, really close. I'm gonna be honest, I never really liked editing photos to be fake purple to make it cyberpunk. But whenever the light actually makes things actually purple, it can look quite cool. Of course, that's my opinion. Don't get triggered if you like to do the purple edits. I just don't like purple I think it's for girls uh, I like uh, I like blue and teal in case you haven't noticed but in this one it looks quite cool the purple even though I'm not a girl then moving along the alleys a little bit and by the way this place seems a little bit sketchy I don't know what kind of establishments they are but usually establishments that are open so late can be sketchy in Korea of course I can google the letters now but when I'm out shooting I also have to care a little bit about who I'm taking photos of and how obviously I'm doing it in case I uh, stumble upon the wrong type of people but this one is just an old lady so I'm not scared of her I can outrun her easily but actually people in Korea even in late nights they don't really 
tend to care too much if you take photos of them. I don't know, it's because of my white face. I just automatically look like a tourist. I mean, I definitely do. Or if people just don't care in general. Also, I don't really go that close to people. And in my type of photography, it's rare to even see people's faces. I, I'm more interested in silhouettes and shapes than direct profiles of people. Here we're using the puddle to frame the subjects, but not going too obvious in the full puddle gram reflection style of 2014, which I try to avoid these days. I used to be a big fan of it when I was a little young, tiny growing up photographer. And these photos quite noisy, but I don't mind noise too much. I actually kind of like the retro style of grain and noise. I've never been a perfectionist photographer. Probably makes me a terrible reviewer of gear, by the way, because I really don't care that much about performance. So I try not to do two series of gear reviews anyways. Taking some mirror selfies uh, with the window with the same neon light. Also kind of looks like a double exposure because of the uh, flowers. I uh, probably should clone that out though. It doesn't look good. It looks a bit distracting. Then walking around for another 15 minutes, I found this another neon sign that illuminated the wall on the other side of the sign. And here is the sign head on. But actually, it looked better. It looked like it had more potential in um, in person. These photos don't look the way that I would like them to look. So that was a bit of a failure. And at this point, Rico was out of battery. And so was my phone. I was kind of scared of getting lost because, you know, new city. I don't exactly remember where my hotel is. So I had to call it a night, head to sleep. I wake up. It's still raining. It's still moody. So, of course, I got to go and shoot more. You might also have seen a couple of videos ago, I made the expan video on the beaches of Busan that is taken at the same time. I also had my Rico with me. I quite like this guy's, I believe it is a yellow umbrella, but it actually looks green. <laughs> I like it anyways. It's a nice color contrast and a nice composition. The first shot works quite well. But then in the next shots, I actually had two different types of edits that I'm still not sure which one I like more. My editing philosophy goes like this. When I see a photo that I've taken, I really try to think about why I took the photo and what exact quality I like in the photo. And then the editing is supposed to exaggerate that quality. But in these beach photos, I like two things. I like how dark and moody it is, but I also like how minimal the scenes look when you contrast people with umbrellas and dark clothing against the bright colored or minimal beach, water, and sky. So the brighter edit is exaggerating that, and then the darker edit is exaggerating the mood. And I still don't really know which one I like more. I would say both of these are partly inspired by film. One of the reasons I like shooting film is because it gives me more ideas about editing digital photos as well. So the darker ones are partly inspired by ektachrome, but they're more purple than actual ektachrome. And then the bright edits are more inspired by not any film in particular, maybe a little bit of portrait going for a slightly overexposed look with the faded highlight things. But it's not exactly portrait either, it's just a minimal type of a edit that is better lit. If you guys have an opinion on which edit you like better, let me know in the comments. But I do think it was a really nice scene. I was actually walking with the x pan in one hand and basically the Rico in the other hand I kept switching the camera, so I was a little bit overwhelmed. I couldn't decide which one to take photos with. So I took photos with both of them, which was pretty funny because I'm also holding an umbrella. It's very windy, so I'm like juggling these cameras. It's a miracle I didn't drop my recoil this time. I guess it wouldn't have mattered on the beach unless sand went inside of it. Uh. And yeah, this is just the most photogenic couple of all time ever. And on the left hand side of this photo, you can see the guy with the black and the guy with the green umbrellas approaching which I'm gonna take a photo of later which I also took a black and white photo of that I really liked with the um, X-Pan. I like the black and white photo when you can see the different shades of colors even though it's black and white. I mean you can't explain that. How does that even work? <laughs> and because this Ricoh is a water angle lens, again 28 millimeters, it makes it easier to compose with the tall buildings in the background which is a fun quality of the beach in Busan. Actually, the beach areas of Busan are surprisingly far from the quote-unquote central Busan area. 
and I heard from a friend uh, that the area right next to the Busan station would be interesting to photograph. There's this uh, Texas street right next to the Chinatown area of Busan, so I thought I would have a lot of potential. But actually, because of the temperature and the car having heating, the cab having heating, some of my favorite photos, again, came from the car ride, which is a good reminder to always keep your eyes open, even on transport, and uh, never stop shooting. And in the middle of the car ride, I had this idea, because the windows were getting steamed, I would um, rub the window a little bit to reveal a minimal part of it. I felt a bit sorry because I probably stained the window a bit and the driver had to clean it. But, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do for photography. Sacrifice things for the art. And really the minimal compositions through that work quite nicely. It would have been even better if it was nighttime because a lot of these photos are a little bit too bright to edit in the way that I would want. The raw files had a lot more potential than I could pull out of them because of the brightness, unfortunately. But this photo in particular, I quite like. It's just working. It's exactly what I want. and. I'm shooting through a moving car, so that is also a little bit challenging in terms of timing and settings, but, you know, just going for high shutter speed, not minding too much about the potential noise. It's always better to have the shot be noisy than have a shot that is too blurry. Here, composing the convenience store, composing another umbrella in the right spot. But again, I do wish that the car ride was a little bit longer. This had a lot of potential. Really nice, moody shots of wet windows and i do think it's pretty funny that the car ride had the best photos because when the car ride was over when i actually arrived in my destination it was still raining but unlike the beach the scenes were not as photogenic during the daytime in the streets of busan in the streets of central busan so i actually didn't really get any photos at all maybe a couple one that i'm gonna show you here and then it started to clear up the rain and uh, my results got even worse. It is a pretty interesting area, this area in Busan though, because here you can see it's Chinatown, but there's also so many Russian shops. And then just like five minutes the other way, there's a Texas street with a lot of American, like fake Texas style shops. But then there's also like Filipino shops. It's a very international area. You know, it's always a little bit lame to shoot. If you've been shooting for like two days straight in this really cool, rainy, slightly foggy conditions, and then all of a sudden the rain stops, and it's not nighttime, and the light is kind of boring. It's a lot more difficult to get good results in those situations. I took a couple photos with the Leica M10. I don't like any of them, to be honest. It's during the blue hour. It's still a little bit rainy, but not really. There's no interesting light. And it's all kind of boring. To be honest, I haven't got as much use out of the Leica M10 as I thought when I bought it. I really loved it when I bought it. I was in New York City at the time, and I feel like the Leica color scheme really, the color profile really works for New York City in particular. But then for some places it just doesn't work as well, and it's, you know, I, I just don't get as much use out of this camera as I thought. It's probably also because I have a little too many cameras to begin with, so I always choose a different camera and I don't use it as much as I thought. So in hindsight, maybe a little bit of a waste of money. I've been thinking about swapping the digital M10 for a film like a M6 or an M7. I think I'd get more use out of that, but we'll see. Because it's also a shame to give up such a beautiful camera. So I don't know, maybe I'll just keep everything and, you know, keep invest, buy my NFTs. Now, some of you have even commented that I really love the rain a little too much, almost. Like, I never take photos when it's sunny, and to be honest, I do, but I like the rain so much that whenever it's raining, it just makes more sense to go shoot when it's raining because I know I'm gonna get some results a lot easier as opposed to when it's not raining. So I treat photography when it's not raining a little bit differently. When it's not raining, I just, I shoot a lot more casually, often with the Ricoh, because it's the perfect camera for casual shooting, but I treat it more like location scouting and I may not go out for as long and I definitely don't shoot much of any YouTube B-roll background vlogging videos during those times. And by now, we are exiting Busan via train. So it's train to Seoul, actually. I arrived back to Seoul on the last train. Now, the problem with doing that seems to be that everybody is in the line for the cab. And at the time, I did not realize that I could use the Korean Uber equivalent software because last time I tried to use it, it required a domestic Korean credit card. So here I am back in Seoul and it's like 1 a.m. The taxi line is massive and there's not even any taxis arriving, but it's about a one hour walk to my hotel. So I decided to just 
walk it with my with my heavy luggage but at least i got my rico in my pocket and i can take some photos to distract myself from the very annoying trip that i'm gonna have to take and here's a photo of phone booths they always have nice lighting so i'm attracted to them kind of like a moth to a flame or um, a light and of course i took a lot more photos that night but long story short they all sucked the next day, because I'm staying in Dong Diamond, it's right next to the design plaza and it's a sunny morning, I go for a walk with Rico and try to take some black and white photos during the sunlight. Completely different type of photography that I'm used to, so uh, time to expand my horizons and experiment a little bit. And this structure is just very easy to take photos of. I always take this one photo because it's such an obvious composition that my photographer brain just goes you gotta take the photo. Working with shadows is something you gotta do in black and white photography because you cannot work with colors and that is what I'm trying to do here. Here's a guy pointing, capturing the moment. Now I do have to say that one thing about a shooting in very bright sunlight with the Rico is that's the only time that I do miss having a viewfinder because you can't really see the screen that well, you're just gonna have to shoot by instinct. Composing photos, you can't exactly preview them, but then it's not the worst problem of all time ever because, you know, film photography or even more blind usually. This photo is probably the best black and white photo that I've taken so far. And uh, I really do wonder if I was being flipped off here or the lady is simply protecting herself from the sun. I honestly don't know which one, but it's cropped in a little bit. I was quite far, so I doubt she saw me, but it's always possible she did see me and it's just flipping me off. But in general, I have never had a bad experience taking photos of people in Korea. I've heard from some friends that they have had problems, but I don't know, maybe I just don't look threatening because I, people never react to me. And this perfectly aligned light, very easy to take, very simple geometrical style black and white photos. But um, one photo of the lady who is potentially flipping you off is probably my best because it actually has more than just shapes going on. It's at least a little bit of a moment or a story attached to it, but people are definitely protecting themselves from the sun, as I see here, the next photo as well. This is a little bit too close, actually. Should be further away, would look nicer and more minimal. And I finally discovered what the hell those visors that every single Korean old lady wears are for. And a funny little detail, you can see myself in the shadow in the photo. And because this video is not long enough already, a couple more photos I wanna show you. Like I said, Rico is the perfect casual photography camera, so I always have it in my pocket. And even on those days that I'm not planning to take photos, I usually end up taking just a couple. And all these are those kind of photos. Oh, and it's also a great camera for hikes because it weighs absolutely nothing. And that is it for this round of Rico photos. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough B-roll for these because of a terrible lack of planning that is always a problem. I finally figured out in the last couple of videos that I filmed from Seoul and Korea that just filming yourself and filming more B-roll definitely makes the storytelling aspect of these kind of videos a lot more better, more better. But this one was a little bit out of sync from before. I realized that so but still i hope you enjoyed it anyways as i said previously i've left korea for now i'm in finland currently for the holidays but there's not that much to do so a lot more videos to come hopefully soon see you next time bye bye